The development of the English electric lightning originated in Britain's need to develop a supersonic fighter. In 1947, the Ministry of Supply was approached with a proposal from the former chief designer of Westland Aircraft, and in response, specification ER-103 was issued for a single research aircraft, which was to be capable of flight at Mach 1.5 and 50,000 feet. In November 1948, a design proposal featuring a stacked engine configuration, a high-mounted tailplane and a conventional 40-degree swept wing, was submitted. In January 1949, English Electric designated the project P-1. The wing sweep was soon increased to 60 degrees, to make the aircraft able to achieve Mach 2, and the ailerons were moved to the wingtips. Wind tunnel tests led to the lowering of the tailplane below wing level. In April 1950, English Electric received a contract for two flying airframes, and one static airframe. Three prototypes were handbuilt, and the first prototype flew for the first time August 4, 1954. One week later, the prototype officially reached supersonic speed for the first time. The prototype had actually reached Mach 1.1 on its first flight, but due to an error with the Mach meter, this was not discovered until later. In May 1956, the P-1 was named the Lightning. A second phase of prototypes had also been ordered, that would develop the aircraft towards reaching Mach 2. These were initially designated the P-1B and the first flew for the first time in April 1957. On November 25th, the prototype reached Mach 2, the first time for a British aircraft. The first production version of the Lightning was the Lightning F-1. It was designed as an interceptor, intended to defend British airfields, that were the highest priority targets in the UK for enemy nuclear weapons. To meet these requirements, emphasis for the F-1 was placed on rate of climb, acceleration and speed, rather than range. It was armed with two 30mm Aden cannons, and an interchangeable weapons pack that contained two additional 30mm guns, 48 2-inch unguided air-to-air -air rockets or two de Havilland Firestreak air-to-air -air missiles. The F-1 was also equipped with a Ferranti AI-23 radar. The Lightning F-1A and F-2 had minor improvements of the design, but the following F-3 version was significantly upgraded. It had more powerful Rolls-Royce Avon engines, a larger fin and a strengthened inlet cone. The radar was improved, and the ability to carry the red top missile was added. At the same time, one 30mm cannon was removed. However the more powerful engines also increased fuel consumption, limiting the range even more. This was solved in the next version, the F-3A, by adding a non-jettisonable ventral fuel tank, and a new wing design. The new wing design incorporated larger fuel tanks, and improved maneuverability. The Lightning F-6 was originally very similar to the F-3A, although it could carry two extra fuel tanks on pylons over the wings. These tanks were jettisonable, and they gave the F-6 a substantial improvement in deployment capability. Eventually, the F-6 also had two Aden cannons mounted in the front, solving the problem with the lack of cannons. The final British Lightning version was the F-2A. It featured an upgraded wing and fin design, the larger fuel tank, the ability to carry Firestreak missile and the nose-mounted Aden cannon. It did however lack the thrust of the later Lightning versions, since it was an upgraded version of the Lightning F2, but it had the longest range of all Lightning versions. An export version of the Lightning, the Lightning F53, was developed by BAC. The export Lightning was designed to be a multi-role aircraft, rather than an interceptor, it was based on the F-6, but incorporated an additional pair of hard points under the wing. This added the capability for carrying air-to-ground weaponry. The F-53 could also be equipped with various weapons packs or a reconnaissance pod, fitted with five 70mm cameras. Several two-seater training variants were produced, both for UK use and export use. The export T-55 version was also equipped for combat use. A two-seat design with a variable geometry wing was developed for Royal Navy use, but this design was never produced. The Lightning has become known for its exceptional climb rate. It was able to take off and climb almost vertically from the runway. A Lightning flying at optimum climb profile would reach 36,000 feet in under three minutes. The official ceiling of the Lightning was kept secret, but successful intercepts could be made at up to 65,000 feet. 
During an exercise in 1984, an RAF pilot intercepted a U-2 at 88,000 feet. The production Lightning F-1 entered Royal Air Force service in May 1960. Pilots reported it easy to fly, and the radar and missiles proved effective. However the serviceability of the aircraft soon proved to be extremely poor, due to the complexity of the aircraft. It proved hard to get more than 20 flying hours per aircraft per month. While the Lightning F-1 served in limited numbers, for a short time, it was a significant step forward in Britain's air defense capabilities. The F-2 entered service at the end of 1962. The following F-3 had a short operational life, due to defense cutbacks. The introduction of the F-3 and F-6 did however allow the Royal Air Force to retire older aircraft types like the Gloucester Javelin in the mid-1960s. Lightnings were slowly phased out of Royal Air Force service between 1974 and 1988. The Lightning was replaced by the Tornado F-3. The export Lightning served in the Kuwait Air Force, and in the Royal Saudi Air Force. In total, 337 Lightnings were produced.